I'm now being joined on the program live by the governor of Imo State, Senator Hope Uzadema, who joins us virtually from Oweri, the Imo State capital. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us tonight. First and foremost, I guess it would be good for us to get a background on the reasons or what inspired the purchases of those gadgets and those armored personal vehicles that you donated to the police today. Thank you, Sheo. And um, uh, let me start by saying that the only reason why there is a government, the primary purpose of government, is the security of life and property. And of late, we are witnesses to the increasing wave of banditry, kidnapping, and all sorts of criminality in Imo State that led to the destruction of so many police stations and the killing of so many policemen. And as a government, we must support our security agencies to be able to do their job, their mandate, their constitutional mandate of ensuring law and order in the society. And in this respect, we decided to support the Nigerian police and other security agencies who have been fighting this battle by making sure some of the equipments that are not easily at their disposal are procured to enable them become more efficient and proactive. So that is the reasoning behind our decision to procure armored personal carriers, knowing fully well that the bandits are also operating with high caliber weapons that have caused or led to the death of so many policemen and women, including the Nigerian army. Quickly ask, is there any reason perhaps AIG or yourself as a government in Imo State discovered behind the direct assault on security agents or agencies or the Nigerian police force in Imo State? Any reason behind that? Why are they doing that? Well, it is not uh, limited to Imo State alone. Of course, you can see the wave of banditry across the country today as banditry in the northern part of the country, banditry in the southern part of the country, banditry also in the eastern part of the country. But there are peculiarities state by state. Some of these crimes are being uh, supported. Recall that two years ago, when this thing started in Nemo State, when the bandits attacked police stations, as they're leaving from the scene of crime, people will be clapping for them. People will be laughing with them. So we, the people took this thing as if it was a kind of entertainment. But incrementally, lives were lost. Incrementally, assets were destroyed. Incremental, incrementally, police stations were destroyed and burnt down. Individual homes. Some targeted politicians were also, their houses were burnt. So we have to, we took personal interest to begin to investigate the reason behind this. I told you times with that number in Imo State. Some of the cases of banditry here are politically contrived. Some are the real attacks by bandits. So I think that the kind of politics with bitterness that is going on in the state and some part of this uh, uh, region should really be condemned. And that is why we have decided to embark on both kinetic and non-kinetic approach. We've engaged the community leaders. We've engaged the vigilante approach. We've engaged people into dialogue, getting traditional rulers to embark on reconciliation, address the political grievances of some politicians who have not been able to manage the defeat or loss or losses they got from the last election. So that we are on it. I think uh, we are very getting close to a final solution to the issue of banditry and uh, kidnapping and all these sorts of crimes in Imo State. 
So, I mean, you mentioned, I mean, a few times we've spoken about this in an interview with us here. You said that uh, some of these things are politically backed. And uh, for tonight, we would like you to uh, clarify to us. You've mentioned bandits, sometimes unknown gunmen, uh, terrorists. What exactly are the major issues here in Emo State? I, I see the case of bandits uh, linked to the northwestern region of the country, or terrorists, the Boko Haram, that we see in some parts of the country, or the unknown government that are peculiar to the southeastern region, or in Emo State, it's just pure politics and brigandage that is involved here. Well, you show all these dragons came from people like you, whether they're called unknown government, whether they're called bandits, whether they're called armed robbers or kidnappers. The fact still remains that the common denominator is that people are being killed, assets are being destroyed, violence is being, is being encouraged. So all we are saying, even the Nigerian military has decided even to reform their curriculum to now bring experts that will now teach our soldiers, our security agencies, of this modern kind of crime that was not here before this time. So everybody, we were all taken on our ways. But the good news is that we have risen to the occasion. So we are now going to address the issues. One thing we've not gotten from 1990 to today is to how to manage political defeats. Our democracy is highly threatened because of that. People are not doing politics with the spirit of sportsmanship as it is practiced in other climes. People are so bitter when they're not able to have their way. And they can go at, to any length to uh, make sure that individual interests or personal interests are achieved. But I think that uh, gradually so we are coming to terms with the realities of, of, of the time. Now, I mean, you, when you say this in Imo State, the peculiarity, is about politics of bitterness. Have you been able to come around to those who are perhaps behind all of these, maybe identify the, the players or the perpetrators or those behind it? Have you been able to do that? When you say that you are coming to a very point to solving it permanently, what exactly do you mean? Well, I, what I mean is that uh, the investigation in some of these cases have gotten to advanced stage. And what you want to get tonight may not be possible because the matter, some of these matters are still being investigated by security agencies. By the time they come up with their final reports, it will be made public to all of us. And that time, too, you may be able to know the identities of some of those behind the bandit train in most. Hmm. Okay. So maybe we can call the ones in Imo say political banditry, isn't it? Maybe that, that, that jargon might be correct to identify the problem, uh, in a, because sometimes, as I say, politics is local. Maybe some of the situation in Imo State is also peculiarly local. Uh, let me ask you, Governor, uh, the vigilantes and the Ebubago, uh, how much of that has been able to help in securing Imo State or helping, uh, we saw what happened in Ondo State. Uh, those that have criticized the vigilantes and the Ebubago in Imo State, what is going on? Is this underhandedness or how are you identifying some of their excesses such that uh, innocent people are not being unnecessarily harassed or killed in the process? Ebubago is a vigilante group in Imo State. And how do you become a member of a Bubago? The community leaders through their town union and traditional rulers submit names of young men and women willing to help uh, with the services of uh, vigilante arrangement that Imo State government uh, created. It is a product of a legislation there is a law back in Ebubago by Imo State House of Assembly. And the, the approach is to get communities to be involved, collect intelligence, and then hand this intelligence to security agencies. And the Ebubago has no sophistication 
like the kind of rifle, the kind of gun that the bandits are carrying all along. The Bagu doesn't, they are not armed. The Bagu is a vigilante arrangement who, when they see unusual movements, they pick it up and they report to security agencies to work with it. So it's not as if it's a, a kind of uh, a security force that goes to war or that can kill or, or, or that or that. So I am saying that those who are not interested in having a peaceful atmosphere, a peaceful environment in Imo State are those that are criticizing Ebubagu. Some of these bandits are now operating as Ebubagu. Of late, we discovered that bandits will attack a particular place. And the next thing, because they have their syndicate, the next thing you will see, they come up with a propaganda. Ebubago have attacked. But between me and those who are in charge of Ebubago and the security agencies, they know that Ebubago doesn't have the capacity to attack men with sophisticated arms. So it is that is why the, the political undertone of the criminality in Imo State is gradually being unraveled. And at the end of the day, we'll get we'll, we'll, we'll come to town with the restore. So it is not about so the value. Perhaps, uh, let me, yeah. So let, let me, let's perhaps, perhaps wrap up on the issue of uh, the internal security in Imo State. All right. So, and I'd like to ask, how many of those members of the Bubuagu, the vigilantes, do you have in Imo State? Like your colleague governor in Benue State, who is seeking, requested to the president, that the local vigilantes that are set up in that state should be armed. Would you also be considering that a Bubuagu and the vigilantes in Imo State should carry arms? I, I was, I know I'm a parliamentarian, and right from the days of my days in the Senate. We have always gone against arming individuals that are not trained to be armed. So if I go in Imo State, I'm not talking about Benue because I don't know the situation in Benue. If I go in Imo State, I'm not going to arm them. Rather, if I go to do collaborative contribution and work with security agencies who are sufficiently armed by government. You know the provision of security, like the police, like the army, like the navy, like the air force, is under the exclusive list. So, as a federating unit, I don't know where I will get the mandate or the statute that will enable me to procure sophisticated arms to give to local people like Ebubago members who have not been trained. So, you don't ask for to an injury. All right, uh, let's move into politics quickly. Uh, but before we do that, um, that uh, the usual weekly um, see at home, how is that working out in your state? Is it dousing out or is it still there? Well, if you uh, come to Imo, we, there is nothing called sit at home anymore. When people are going about their businesses, people are going about whatever they want to do. Of the workers go to work, traders go to do their businesses. Uh, we have been able to encourage and support our security officers to occupy the space and ensure that the people are protected. There may be pockets of cases here and there in Imo State at the Askes, but with time, I'm sure those things will be over. Is there anything like a wave of obedient movement in your state? Because um, what we are hearing is that political movement uh, that is going to affect the southeastern region of the country and the five states, uh, those who belong to the uh, obedient movement, the Peter Ruby supporters, are saying, look, they will take the five states of the southeast 100%. Those are some of the political um, uh, permutations of those who are supporting a Peter Obi. Is that fever catching Imo State? You are the leader of uh, APC in that state. I think uh, I'm a politician, and you know my party is APC. And uh, I have my candidates in my party. 
And I know that we are currently consulting and speaking to our people to vote for our candidates. So, and I'm concerned with what will come out of my campaign for my party. I don't want to join issues with people be who you know is not a member of my party. But I know members of APC are obedient to APC. Oh, so there are obedience also in APC? I don't know what you mean. The meaning of obedience as it means English. Loyalty to party is super. It, it has, that's the latest uh, political uh, slogan in Nigeria that have been brought into our political dictionary in Nigeria. But let me ask you, what would you be telling I think, I think, your I think members? That, that, is show, that is Shemu's dictionary. That is not my dictionary. In my own dictionary, no, what it, is there is APC. It, 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 <laughs> it just crept into... <laughs> It just crept into our political dictionary recently, obedient, uh, mm -hmm. perhaps uh, coined out of Peter Obi's name. So uh, give us an understanding of what you will be telling the people of Imo State. What would you say you have done to convince them to vote for your party in the next dispensation? I'm very confident that the reasonable minds in Imo State will vote for my party. Let me start. By 2020, when I came here as the governor, 95% of our major roads were not passable. Today, the major economic roads in Imo State have been managed in a very first-class manner that even the opposition party members are commending my efforts. From 1999 to today, Members of Imo State House of Assembly has no place they stay to sit. They are attached to one local secretariat here in the The Imo State House of Assembly building that was abandoned over 30 something years ago has just been rehabilitated and the parliamentary environment created for our legislators. There is no member of the House of Assembly who will go into that place come out, and tomorrow there is an election that will not want to vote for APC. For over 30 years, the Imo Standard Shoe, which was a major industry created by Mbako administration, was abandoned and seized by Amcon for bad loans. My government, within two years, have just recovered Imo Standard Shoe. And any moment from now, Imo Standard Shoe will be creating over 10,000 jobs. Recall that the Malaysians came to Nigeria to take a pan can, pan fruit, seedlings, to go back to Malaysia. That was the Eastern Palm by the government of M.I. Obara. Other palm has been ab abandoned for over 30 years. I've just recovered that other palm, paid off the loans, going to buy a memorandum of understanding with the rules of Dublin. Araba Farm is currently producing 100 tons of palm oil on a daily basis. And if our performance improvement plan is implemented, Araba Farm will be creating over 35,000 jobs. Why will those people from there not vote for APC? Over 1,800 workers that were retrenched without pension have just paid their pension. That is 1,800 votes for APC. Or where the water scheme, all the residents in Oweri lived with that water for over 18 years. Or where the water scheme is running now. Households in Oweri cannot drink water. Why would they not vote for APC? If you come and drive from Oweri to Olu, Mr. President is due to commission these two major routes, two major economic routes that will stim stimulate commerce in Imo State and indeed the Eastern region. Oweri to Olu is properly constructed and lit up. In fact, they can drive from Oweri to Olu with your eyes closed, and you won't go into the bush. Oweri to Okibwe, the same thing. A few days ago, I flagged off a construction, the construction of Oweri to Umai. These are federal rules that have been abandoned for decades. I did these rules with understanding that federal government will refund the money back to the state of why will those living in those areas not vote for APC? It is not talking. Uh, it's let not me, black Let me it perhaps take you further. Uh, let me take you further. 
and perhaps ask you, you are spearheading the Bola Tinobu, uh, Kashi Mishetima presidential campaign in the Southeast. Now, uh, there's been a lot of criticism uh, and a lot of pressure on your party, especially on the issue of the same faith decision that your party made. How do you hope to market this brand, this presidential ticket, to the people of your region? Democracy is government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And in Nigeria, we are practicing partisan democracy, where every party is entitled to field candidates for every contest. APC has selected their candidates. And the next stage of for the democratic requirements is to now market the candidates to the people. I'm not going to market the candidates only to share with because we are broadcasting. This is a business between me, my party, and the voters. So we are taking our candidate, which is our product. I coordinate him now in the Southeast. So I'm taking him to the people of Southeast. And it's my business to explain to them why he should be voted for. And I have things like... So that's just, why we are asking, what exactly will you be telling your people? How do you market him? Considering some of told, what has become from the, perhaps from a most, tough truth, from him, from him politically speaking. From point of view... Just a few minutes ago, I just told you about some achievements we have recorded in Nemo State. In the same manner, before 2015, all we hear is that there will be a second Niger bridge that will connect commerce between Lagos and the East. Nobody paid any attention. Government after government made those promises and it never happened. Right from the days of Chadare in the Second Republic, the APC government under President Mohamed Buhari came. The second Niger Bridge is 95% complete and about to be commissioned by the Mr. President any moment from now. With a budget of 368 billion naira, 98% fully paid for by giant construction giant Julius Berger. But that cut to uh, Enugu Road up to 2015 was not possible. Go there now, you see that all those traders from Aba, from Newi, from Okigwe that were crying during that period, they are not very happy because the road has been done. The same thing from Onicha to Enu. The same thing from Onicha to Oweri. So we have things to show. It is not about propaganda. It is not about uh, social media. It is not a social club. We are talking of democracy. And leadership is a serious business. The President Mohamed Gubara administration, with these achievements that has refused to go into propaganda like all the opposition parties. Because of the patriotic determination of Mr. President, he has been able to decentralize development in Nigeria. That today, if you talk about Southeast, you have things to show for it. If you talk about Southwest, you have things to show for it. Anybody who does not like APC government in Southwest, and yet every morning you enter train in Lagos and go to the party. And you enter train in Abuja, you go to Kaduna. And you come and see that the Eastern Rail Line is being rehabilitated from Pochako to Meduki. With all the federal road networks under serious construction, some already right. completed. What are we talking about? No, no. So We're let's get to the campaign time. field. But let me, uh, please, uh, we need to close this conversation. And I'd like to ask you this, just in about five seconds, if you can answer this. Since you're spearheading uh, the APC campaign in the Southeast, out of the five states, how many of those states can you deliver to your party? Well, um, you see, it is not a predetermined uh, arrangement. I'm confident that APC has done so well to the extent that they can win all the states in Nigeria. But we still need to engage the people. And campaigns will soon start by September, and we'll have to go and market our products. By the time we finish the marketing, that will carry out an opinion poll that will tell us or give us an idea of how many states that will win proper. Because we're talking about human beings. And in this business, one day can change a lot of things. Don't forget, it's democracy. Right. Thank you so much. Governor Hope, Thank who's you, Adema, executive governor of uh, Imo said, thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Bye-bye.